Hello everybody and welcome to another Web Factory 2010 tutorial. In this video I'm gonna show you how to set up the Modbus connector in Web Factory 2010 Studio. So let's get started. Now the first thing we need to do as usual when setting up a new connector is adding the connector to our existing server. As you can see I've got the server defined in my server list and I already have a couple of connectors on my server but now I'm gonna add a new connector and this time we're gonna work with a Modbus connector. The Modbus connector configuration is visible under the server when the connector is selected. Now we can clearly see that our Modbus connector configuration allows us to add a new item or delete an existing item. Now we're gonna click new and create a new device for our Modbus connector. Now we can connect to our new device using the IP and the port while having selected the TCP connection or using the RTU connection where we can define the port, the data transfer rate, the data bits, the parity, the stop bits and the handshake. Now I'm gonna go with the TCP connection, I'm gonna click OK and as you can see over here we have a multiple device network device actually because we can create multiple devices linked to our main device over here and I'm gonna click new while having this new device selected and we're gonna have our first Modbus substation. Now our Modbus substation contains four different items and we can see we have coils we have discrete inputs, we have holding registers and we have input registers. And if we select the Modbus substation itself, we can see that we can alter the polling period for each one of these items. We're gonna go into these items and create some signals. I'm gonna do a couple of signals for the coils, a couple of signals for the discrete input, for the holding registers and for the input registers. Now if we go into the coils item we can see that our signals have the name and the address of the signal only so no other options for the coil items. If we go into the discrete input signals we can see we have the same situation over here but the holding register allows us to select different type of signals. Now I'm gonna create a couple of new signals in the holding register item of our Modbus substation and I'm gonna show you how we can change the type of our signal. So the base type, the default one, as you can see is the integer but we can also use an array. Now if we select the array type for our signal we can define the array length so how many items our array contains and I'm gonna put four over here. Now the third signal type can be double integer and the fourth can be real. Now we have our four signals with different types defined and I'm gonna save the configuration once again and proceed into creating another Modbus substation just to demonstrate how our substations are linked to our main Modbus device. Now if we select our Modbus device we can see we can define different prefixes for each substations and these prefixes will be imported as signal prefixes in Web Factory 2010 when we will browse the connector. We have the unit IDs of these substations which are unique identification numbers and we have a couple of new options over here which are the xlate byte order double integer and the xlate byte order real. Now we can use these two options to define the order of the high byte and the low byte and we can use the second option to switch the order of the high byte and the low byte. Now in a usual Modbus setup these two options have the same value. So let's save the connector configuration once again and go into our server and browse the Modbus connector. Now while having the Modbus connector selected I'm gonna right click and select browse connector. And we can see that while browsing the connector all our signals are available so we're gonna select them all and create a new destination group for them to be placed in. Now I'm gonna click add and confirm the creation of the destination group. 
close this dialog and as you can see we have our signals inside our Modbus connector group 1 destination group and these signals are ready to work with the Web Factory 2010 suit. Now this is everything about configuring the Modbus connector in Web Factory 2010. I'm gonna meet you next time with more great information of Web Factory 2010 Studio. So see you soon.